it's time to ride the funk train and funk master v is here with an exciting special sneaky sneaky double review for the fans of the atari 7800 now looky here Ooh. if you are in the community you know what these two things are this is night guy and another castle and drone patrol and these were two video games excuse me there that were released at the Portland Gaming Retro Expo? Portland Retro Gaming? I don't know. They, they, for some reason, they do these exclusive fancy pants uh, retro conventions in the furthest spot away in the United States, away from major populations. They don't do this stuff in Atlanta or Ohio or New York City. They, choo they choose, you know, the dirty hippies that don't wash your feet. That's what fine. Nice but what I'm talking about... These were two Atari Age exclusives that they release, and uh, you had to be there to get this. Now, I was a naughty funk, and, uh, you know, sometimes you got to do what Solomon Grundy says and dance with the devil in a uh, pale moonlight. And I bought these two off eBay secondhand. And when you intentionally sin and God is watching you, he stabs you sometimes with his uh, judgment fork right in the chest and drone patrol does not work but good news is this works and the other good news is the creator uh, Steve Englehart uh, found it in his uh, sweetheart to release this uh, full game online uh, for free that you can play either through an emulator or on a game drive. This one, however, by Vlad Zeninga, um, you got to, I think, have the, the, the game. But uh, since these two games were released in secret and sneaky, sneaky secret, I'm going to uh, review them uh, both uh, together, and uh, I will tell you what I think about these little jerks, and uh, we will go from here. Since the beginning of time, there's only been one website with the Baba Wongs, to claim every game reviewed when it came to the pro system, and that's Atari7800forever.com. But now it's time to get on that YouTube trip, babies. And who am I? I'm Funkmaster V, musician, ghost hunter, hat flipper, pro wrestler, comedian, actor, filmmaker, and I'm going to take you on a whirlwind tour of all things cool about Atari and the Atari 7800 with a podcast, news, even new crap. Baby, are you ready to get your groove on? Because it's about to get funky up in here. Okay, so the first game we're going to review is this Night Guy and Another Castle game by Vlad Zeninga. Now, you may be familiar, this is a sequel to Night Guy in a low-res world castle days. Now, this game is beloved. People loved his first game, it's whimsical, it's fun, it's easy to play, a little difficult to master, like just like all the Atari jargon from the day. This rated very highly on my website, and it actually placed very well and very highly on the top 100 Atari games of all time list that me and John stole from the uh, Atari Network compiled. This actually placed in the top 100 games of all time. It was excellent. Now, the sequel comes out. Now, looking at the box, it's already starting to worry me a little bit. It looks a little bit more generic. I don't like that gray color. It's kind of bothering me. And just even the term in another castle seems like there wasn't a lot of thought maybe put into this. And when you turn the game on and you see what the story is, basically, you don't know what happened. You just woke up and you're in another castle. Now, I'm not going to say that the first game was Shakespeare, but you got to pick between saving a dog or saving a cat. It's the classic uh, kidnapping trope, but this just seemed a little lazy. But hey, we trusted Vlad. Vlad's been doing great by us uh, for a long time. So let's hop in here and play it. The graphics are on par with the first game, and so is the sound. The graphics may actually be a little bit better, and the gameplay is the same. There's simple fighting techniques, but basically this is a simple platformer where you backtrack some, you memorize the enemy patterns, and there's jumping is, is basically the main function that you do. You can play this game with an Atari 2600 joystick. There's only one button. Even though this is a two-dimensional 
platformer. I characterize the first game as a two-dimensional Dragon's Lair, and that summation applies here too. This is a true sequel. The layout of the castle in this game is pretty unique. There's four elemental worlds that you have to get into, and you have to break the seals of these four elements. There's fire, stone, wind, and water, I think. And once you break those, you can get you get a key, and you get to go fight the main boss. All of that sounds great, and there's some good ideas and some interesting puzzles, but I want to tell you, this game was extremely short. You can beat this game in under 20 minutes, and... I wasn't even trying. I was like listening to a podcast about like baking or murder. And I think I beat this game on my third try. And uh, I'm not a good platformer guy. This almost feels like a game that was designed to be baby's first adventure. Like, you know how Kirby games are like real easy and they should ramp up the difficulty. This game is programmed well, but I just think it's it's a little underbaked. I don't know if he was rushed to have this thing released for the Portland Gaming Expo or maybe he ran out of uh, Inspirato, but this game is going to disappoint a majority of the people that love the first game. The first game, you beat the dragon and you had to figure out how to get all the way back through the castle in reverse in, in a time limit. This game, I, I think there's only one secret to find. There was four secrets in the first one. And you just get an ending screen that said, hey, good job, congratulations. Really disappointing. Again, if you like Night Guy, the first game, this is more of the same. It feels like a continuation, but there's just not a lot of exciting ideas in the sequel. I will say the fire boss is really, really, really cool and the highlight of the entire game. One thing I'm looking forward to from Vlad is his board game, Night Guy on... a. Th 30 Spaces of Doom, something like that. This game is tremendous. Maybe one of the most anticipated games for the Atari 7800 that I've ever uh, held in my heart with lust and desire. I can't wait for him to, to finish that guy. But this one, you're not missing much. Now, like I said, Drone Patrol does not work for me on the Atari 7800 properly. This thing is a brick uh, and very disappointing. However, I'm able to play this through an emulator, and uh, I feel like I can give it a pretty good review through the emulator. And thanks to Steve for letting everybody have that for free. That's really cool of you. Now, Steve Englehart said he designed this game because he wanted to fool around with parallax scrolling. Now, parallax scrolling famously was done in the game Tower Toppler, which is one of my favorite 7800 titles. And also, uh, Bob De Crescenzo did a good job with it with Bentley Bear Crystal Quest. If you don't know what that means, it's basically like it's a way to render graphics to make them look three-dimensional, different uh, parts of the screen moving in different speeds. This game is a city defense title. It's similar in concept to something like Atlantis or Missile Command, where there is an attack happening on the city. This time, you're defending it through the air. You are a drone. So maybe you, yeah, I guess you're in the drone. No, you're you're probably flying the drone. That's probably what's happening. And you've got a laser beam that shoots down to the surface and you can destroy the enemies running amok. It's interesting and he did a great job with the parallax scrolling. He, it, it's, it's beautiful. And there's lots of levels in this game, but there's some fundamental gameplay elements uh, with this guy that uh, that bothered me. But first the positives. He, he seemed to add a lot of different things to this title. He actually added a, a, a different game altogether into this title called Drone Bomber. Now, Drone Bomber, there's a bad guy boss bombing your city. The same beautiful parallax scrolling uh, is happening underneath with the buildings. But this plays a lot like Kaboom. Uh, if you like Kaboom or Avalanche and those types of games, you may sit there and take your shirt off and whirl it around your head. To me, this kind of wore thin. Again, I'm playing on an emulator. I'm not using paddle controls, uh, which you can use, which is really kind of cool. You've got four-channel pokey soundtrack with a built-in music player. That's kind of fun. Uh, again, it's just kind of bells and whistles. I like the seat warmer. I never use that. I don't like my, you know, it comes with the car. It's nice, but it makes my butt sweat. I don't know. It feels weird, especially with the leather pants that I wear. Uh, but anyway, I digress. It also has an Atari Vox compatibility. If you plug in your Atari Vox, you can get over 30 unique phrases from the bad guys. But if we're talking about graphics and gameplay and value and that type of thing, that's where we're having some trouble. You control this drone, you're shooting down, and there's all sorts of bad guys, people, 
cars, that type of thing. The graphics in this game, besides the parallax scrolling, doesn't blow me away. And there's nothing here that makes me go, wow, that's really cool graphics. Even the boss ships, everything looks like it's kind of cut out of cardboard. And some of the graphics of the ships on the ground or the, the tanks and the people on the ground look really kind of uh, chintzy. My other problem is I think the game is weird. I have a problem with logic in video games. I kind of slammed uh, John Hancock's Block Him and Sock Him recently because I'm like, what is a chubby type 2 diabetic uh, candidate? What is he doing throwing blocks 20 feet over his head? He's going to wrench his back. And that was a major problem for me enjoying that game. I just didn't understand what the game was. Here, it, this is the worst way to defend a city. We're shooting into the city from the... We should have people in tanks on the ground. Now, I know this. you guys are going to look at this review and go, what is he talking about? But it just doesn't make any sense. We have no ground attack. We have no ground forces. We have no turrets. We have no tanks ourselves to combat all these people running amok through our huge city. This, these cities are huge, by the way. The other problem is we don't. Ki it's you just can't kill everybody. It, they're all running all over the place. It's, it's not an approachable way to destroy uh, these enemies. I don't know where they're running. Are they running to city hall? Well, we didn't stop hardly half of them. They're going to kill all the presidents and congressmen and stuff. Maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. Hey, oh, political <laughs> joke. But to me, it's just weird. And the enemy doesn't really have an AI. There's just these static patterns that they keep going over and over and over again. There's like missiles that don't really chase you. They just kind of go in a predetermined line. All the enemies on the ground go in a predetermined line. I know I'm being a complete whore here, but I don't like even how we take damage in this game. We have a shield that counts down when we're being hit. It's hard to know when you're being hit. It's kind of like, hey, this bomb, this missile is hitting me in the sky, but my drone doesn't really shake, and uh, there's nothing on screen to let you know. You just kind of have to look over and go, oh, hey, I'm being drained by a, a, a missile. It's not very realistic, and uh, I, I just don't like it. We're also supposed to recharge our laser shots with a yellow drone flying around the screen. We must have BO, because that damn thing runs away from us half the time. The boss battles are okay, but they're not great. Uh, they are cagey. Uh, I don't know. This game just doesn't work for me in a logic standpoint, and I don't find it extremely fun. I do find it extremely original, and I do appreciate all the extras, and I do think the parallax scrolling, which is what he wanted to do, uh, looks great. He did a fantastic job on that. So overall, I don't think this game is going to be the best shooter on the system. It's not going to be Asteroid 7800. It's not going to be Scramble. It's not going to be Pluto so serious. But it is interesting, and we don't have a Missile Command type game for the 7800, uh, and this, this kind of fits that role in a way. It is an interesting game, and I'm going to give it bonus points for that, but at the end of the day, I don't think this is the shooter we begged the 8-Bit Gods 4. All right, guys, thanks. Those are my reviews. Uh, a little disappointing with both of them, but uh, overall, neither one of them are terrible, uh, but uh, just a little disappointing. Uh, check out this weekend. We're going to continue the top 100 Atari games of all time. We're counting down from uh, 40 down to 31. These games are going to be badass. All right, guys, thanks for watching the channel. God bless you all. Peace out and Atari forever.